All right, good morning, everybody. This is Makeup and a Legal Tip. I am Terry Fields, an attorney practicing law here in Atlanta, Georgia, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. This is uh, how I'm getting ready and just sharing a makeup tip with you, sharing a legal tip with you. Now, today's video is going to be a very ambitious one. I am going to briefly walk you through all of the steps um, what happens after you're in a car wreck? What should happen? What, you sh what should you expect after you've been in a car wreck? So I just want you all to know, I was thinking before about how I am just running late the past two days because, you know, today I'm on, the next thing that I'm going to do after this is go to work. And um, first of all, I'm going to be more, oh, I don't even have my watch on this morning. So good. I don't have to worry about um, my watch. I think it was when I was hitting my watch yesterday, it was causing the video to stop. I have an Apple watch that's linked to my phone. But anyway, so I was thinking today about how it used to take me five minutes to do my makeup and get out the door. But for you, because I want to do a legal tip, and I think that if you have an attorney, you should expect that attorney to be presentable. And um, all of that dovetails for me to bring you this, this video series, um, me doing my makeup, getting ready in the morning, and sharing a legal tip. So again, the legal tip for today is what should you expect if you're in a car wreck? You're in a car wreck, you hire an attorney, what should you expect to have in? All right, now, I was supposed to have written a list of the steps, of the makeup steps. I haven't done it yet, but I will do the best. I think I'm doing better and better every day. So let me just, I'm so, like I bought these beauty blenders and I used it yesterday. I swear I soaked it all day yesterday and the makeup would not come out. So I know I have a couple more uses of this and then it has to go. Cause I just like things to be like the way looking new, pristine, the way that they were. So anyway, all right, first thing I'm gonna do is get these eyes because they look so red to me. I, my teeth are, are one color, my eyes are another color, and I swear to God, I sleep well. I get eight hours and I just about eight hours. Anyway, so let's do a little drops in the eyes. Move this so I can put this behind here. That's a little clear eyes. I know, oh, we also need to moisturize our face. I always want to show you all I'm using Rock SPF 30. And, you know, since this is not a makeup tutorial, this is not a skincare tutorial, I'm looking for you all to help me out with that. So if you have suggestions on things that I should do better, I am a woman of a certain age, so I'm interested in anti-aging. I have acne prone skin. I'm interested in that. And then also I'm getting wrinkles and stuff like that. So I'm again, interested in the anti-aging. I remember when I was like a couple years ago, I got these dimples right here. And I was like, oh, it's so cute. I have dimples. Oh. That was just the beginning of this. <sighs> and I thought, oh, it's so cute. I have dimples now. I mean, why, why would God wait till you're 30, well, a certain age and then give you dimples? It didn't even make any sense. All right, so we're gonna start with eyes. Going to, we're going to start with eyes. And I'm just like getting out of my way the stuff that I am not going to use. I think starting with eyes just makes sense. I'm going to, again, dress for work today. Uh, today's a casual day. I'm not seeing any clients, so I'm very casual. And then I have a long towel today, which can cover my lap as well from any fallout from the makeup. I did not do that yesterday, but that is what we're doing today. Fully dressed because my head, as small as it is, going through these, um, when I put on clothes over my head, it messes up my makeup, my hair, everything. So I don't like this. So, all right, let's do eyes first. Here it is. And we're going to bake later. So I'll take this out. So what to do? Okay, you're in a car wreck. You already know yesterday I told you what the most important thing to do is. You're going to go to a doctor. Um, you're going to see about yourself because I don't care what attorney you use. I don't care how your case winds up going. If, um, Of course, if you're not hurt, don't go see a doctor. And if you're not hurt, uh, you probably won't need the assistance of an attorney anyway. But if you are hurt, go see about yourself. It is so very important. I cannot stress that enough. And I'm just going to go ahead and curl my eyes while I'm at it. Okay, but what to do? Let's say you are hurt. You've gone to the doctor, or let's just say you're in your car still right after the wreck, and you're realizing, 
I'm going to need some help. This is very serious. You have a broken leg, a contusion, or maybe you lost consciousness, or just as soon as you realize that you have serious inju injuries that you're going to need assistance with, um, go ahead and start thinking about the attorney that you want to hire. Now, I, I'm going to do a video series tomorrow about that, who, the attorney you hire, how to select an attorney. But today, I just wanted to walk you through the whole process. So the first thing you do, you go to the doctor, you get seen. Um, depending on the injury you have, that's going to tell you what kind of doctor you need to go to. If you lost consciousness, you need to go to a, a neurologist about uh, brain injury. Um, lately, we've been hearing a lot about concussion protocol in the NFL, but it's real. It can impact anyone who's had head trauma, anyone who loses consciousness, you probably need to be on the concussion protocol as well. So it's very important. If you've broken your leg, of course, you go to in a bone doctor to get that fixed. You, If you have back injuries, neck injuries, you might want to go to a chiropractor. You might want to um, go to rehab therapy. Whatever medical treatment interventions that you need, you need to go ahead and see about yourself. That's number one, right? All right, you selected your attorney. Most attorneys are not going to charge you anything to get started on your case. And that's what you want. Um, most most cases are handled on what's called a contingency here in Atlanta, here in Georgia. Most Actually, most jurisdictions that I know of, that's how the cases are handled. Now, this was just super dark. I guess, I, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know the color of my skin. I'm just going to go in this one. I'm looking for something that's neutral. This one yesterday was too friggin' light. It didn't look as light on the palette as it did on my skin. And this didn't look as dark in here as it did on my skin. So I'm, oh lordy. I'm going to dip into this one. This one here in the middle. See if I can get something that's like my skin color. Because I'm really, yes. Yes. That's what she wants. That's what I've been trying to do this whole time. I guess I forgot which one was neutral. So you want to do this like the uh, windshield wiper. So uh, you want to select a lawyer, call the lawyer. The lawyers will be able to sign you up electronically. At my law firm, we, we can sign you up electronically. You need to be uh, willing to share with the lawyer all the information that you have about your insurance, about the wreck. Uh, they should be able to take notes down and... Um, you know, you want to get the lawyer involved so they can help you get the police report. Gosh, I don't know. I hate that color. I dipped into the dark one, but I don't want to use it. I'm scared to use it. Um, you want them, they need to be able to help you get the police report. And actually, I'm going to clean that brush off because I want to use it. Um, they need to help you. I'm just going to, I've been missing. I used to do this thing in the middle of my eye and I really like that right there. I like I used to do that all the time, so I'm gonna do it again. And I, I'm really just liking my eye like this. So I think that's what I want. That's what I want. That's how I want my eye to look. I need to remember this color. And I'm gonna blend this out. This is my upside down seven, which I'm obsessed with. Y'all see me do that every time. Uh, so your, your lawyer should be able to sign you up electronically. Uh, they need all of the information about your insurance, your past medical. Uh, uh, okay, let me just say this. Be very, very honest with your attorney about uh, past medical care that you've received, especially similar injuries to the ones that you have in this wreck. It's not a problem. Everybody understands that you have lived your life. You've had other injuries. I mean, you're not responsible to walk around in a bubble and not have been injured, but it's going to be helpful. The insurance company is going to know. The insurance, company, insurance company's attorneys, they are trained to like look five years in the past. So they're going to know everything that has happened to you. So don't put your attorney at a disadvantage. Just go ahead and let them know, you know, I was in a wreck like a month ago, uh, six months ago, a year ago, five years ago, and I have a similar injury, or maybe this is aggravated. Doesn't mean that you won't get recovery or that it's bad for your case or anything. It's okay. It's just something that we need to deal with. Um, okay, so... Um, the attorney that you select is going to get a lot of information from you. And I just can't give this up. This little rub right here. I just love this color. It's just about done. Um, and this is for my eyebrows. So, um, you signed up. You've done what's called informal discovery or informal 
information that you have given to your attorney so that they can assist you. Remember, your attorney's on your side. You always want to tell the truth and just help your attorney help you. It's like uh, Jerry Maguire. Help them help you. All right. So, all right. So your case is started. The most important thing that you want to do early in your case is continue to treat, feel better, reach what we call maximum medical improvement. Talk with your doctor about whether you need an MRI. Do you need um, a fusion? Do you need injections? Do you need surgery? Talk to your doctor. Make sure, and I mean early on, go ahead and get this squared away. The longer you wait, the worse it is for your case. You want to be on top of it. You know, the you can think about it yourself. If if someone delays their own treatment, you might start to wonder, well, was she, was, is she even hurt? Is he even really hurt? Because, you know, um, a, a lot of people can sympathize with pain being discomfort and you want to get that discomfort over with as quickly as possible. So if you are delaying, um, that might just put a question in people's mind. And then also, you know, you're not a martyr. No one... <sighs> Not that no one cares, but no one is going to reward you for not taking care of yourself. And that's that's all I can do for the eyes right now. I don't know. I need help, y'all, like I said. Um, so we're going to wait to do mascara. And I guess I can do eyeliner right now. I'm going to sharpen up. I, I have a straight up pencil. It's almost down at the nub. And I'm going to sharpen it up a little bit. This is the Urban Decay Whiskey. Uh, okay. So... Get yourself treated, treat as much as you can. In the meantime, your doc, your uh, law firm is going to be getting the police report if it was on public property or if a police report was taken sometimes on private property, the police will come out and generate a report sometimes. But um, they'll get the police report, just uh, talk to witnesses. Uh, and also at the accident scene, if you see any witnesses, if you could just go ahead and help yourself. Go ahead and get their names and their phone numbers. Sometimes there's a place on the police report for that as well. But if you could just, you know, help yourself. Get your witnesses down. Just say, oh, do you mind if we call you? Can I get your information? People are so nice and helpful. If someone was nice enough to pull over and see about you, they're probably nice enough to at least offer a statement to your attorney. If not, show up in court for you if necessary. All right. So this is the little part that was missing i always have to look to make sure it's still recording you didn't see me yesterday put on my primer 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 whatever i'm gonna shake it up i can tell this is not okay now it is okay it wasn't mixing well but okay so i'm gonna do a little primer you want to give something for your makeup to stick to and i am going to i was watching our makeup tutorial and the girl just rubbed it in with her hands and i'm like okay well, me too. Okay, I may have used a little too much. That's okay. We can wipe it off. And that's what we're going to do. And we're going to put the makeup on our neck and ears too. Don't want to mess up all that eye makeup. Oh, shit. Just went on my eyebrow. Don't want to mess up all that eye makeup I just did. All right. Make sure you are feeling better. Go to the doctor, reach maximum medical improvement. In the meantime, your law firm is working. They should be calling to check on you, make sure you're feeling better, make sure that you are going to your medical appointments. And I can't say it enough, you gotta go to your medical appointments. Let's just say you don't have a car. You're out of a car right now. Um, your law firm may be able to assist you getting to and from the your medical appointment. I know um, we do at my law firm, we, we help. Uh, clients get to and from their medical appointments if they need it and um, just make sure that you go and get everything that you need in the meantime i'm going to uh again okay i'm gonna do concealer first y'all didn't see this yesterday but i did concealer i have really acne problems like overnight yeah i don't know if y'all can see this this i don't know i just have the worst troubles with acne so i'm going to conceal but i'm going to i'm stopping picking I mean, I may have picked a couple days ago. I said I wasn't going to pick any more in the new year, but I have messed that up. So 2023, here we come. No picking in 2023. All right. So that's concealer. All right. And then I'm going to, 
I'm just going to go in with my regular. Regular is 410. I don't know why it's such a big difference between 400, 410, and 420, but it is a big difference. So this is 410. 410 is, 420 is too dark, 400 is too light, so 410 it is. Okay, so we're going to just kind of, I, I think I'm just going to, you know what, it helps me just do all of this at one time. I'm so that's 410. Let me blend. I'm just going to go ahead and blend because I can feel this dripping down my face and I'm not going to be able to take it. Blend, blend, blend. Blend, blend, blend. Okay. All right. Once you've reached what's called maximum medical improvement, just depending on what kind of case you have, your lawyer may send out what's called a demand to the insurance company. Uh, sometimes you want to... Okay, let me just say this. Sometimes if the case is, is bad enough and your injuries are really bad and we're sure that your injuries are more than the policy limits, we may just ask the insurance company to just go ahead and tender without sending what's called a demand. But in most cases, we do want to wait till you've um, reached maximum medical improvement and done all the treating that you're going to do because then we can get all your bills in and we can make sure that you receive all the compensation that you're entitled to. This is a 420. So I'm going to use this brush and I'm going to use this as my contour. This is the darker color. So I'm just going to contour here, here, and then around. This is the darker color. So that's my contour. Um, so, okay, so what we're saying now, either the demand was sent out or we just went ahead and based on your injuries, we just went ahead and asked the insurance company to go ahead and pay. It's like, you know, you already know. Just go ahead and pay up. So we're in the negotiation phase with the insurance company. Um, what happens is sometimes the insurance company are like, go F yourself. You're, we're not, our insured is not responsible for this, for whatever injury your, your client has. Um, we'll see you in court. That's basically what they're saying. And what that means is, let me just say, first of all, for the most part, when you get into a car wreck, you can expect at least a couple months up to a year. And I'm just trying to manage expectations. Sometimes you are able to resolve it much more quickly. Every case is uh, different. So it just depends on the facts of the matter and what's going on and what insurance company you're dealing with and what state you're in and all of that. But um, you can just pack your patience when you get into a car wreck. Don't expect that or the slip and fall. I'm just speaking personal, generally about injuries that you receive that are the fault of someone else. All right, that was my contouring line. Let me do a little highlight with the with the lighter color, uh, and I'm going to use the same brush, just the other side. I'm going to contour like this is the highlight, highlight like here, and I think they do highlight around. I do everything around the perimeter of my face, and then here, and then maybe here. Y'all can see the difference in that color, right? Like, do you think I'm crazy? I'll, do all of these look the same? Okay. All right. So, text message came through, and I'm still recording. And yesterday, people were calling me, and I'm wondering, did the calls make the recording stop? I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Um, What was I saying? Oh, the insurance company saying sometimes they will right back with we are not liable our insured is not liable so that means you have to go to court now already it's a long process but if we have to file a lawsuit in your case you can go ahead and take a couple years first of all, i was like that it was a couple years before the pandemic came through and now the pandemic made everything worse why because the courts closed and the court staff had to evacuate. No one was equipped and ready to work from home. As a matter of fact, you probably don't want court staff working from home on your court filings because that's a quick way. I mean, even though things are a matter of public record, some, some matters are filed under seal with courts. So there's a security concern. You don't want things to get leaked out. And so I don't think the courts were equipped. I know that they were not equipped. A lot of us were caught underwears. So, um... I don't know if I messed that up or not. Um, so that's what backed everything up. Then also, 
under the Constitution of the United States of America, certain cases are entitled to precedence. So it, for instance, we have a court of general jurisdiction here in Georgia, it's called the Superior Court. Everything is filed in the Superior Court. But what they get mostly is, guess what? Divorces, divorce cases. They make up a, a good percent, I would say probably 70% or more of the docket. And so um, divorce cases, but then also you got criminal cases. Okay. First, okay, let me just say, divorce cases clog up the docket. There are a lot of the Superior Court docket. So we use different courts. We file our cases in different courts here in the state of Georgia. We, you know, attorneys know which, which cases are going to, which courts are going to be a little bit more quick with your case. And so we will um, do that. State courts have a higher jurisdiction. I feel like there's so much that I'm skipping over. If if I'm saying stuff that uh, doesn't make sense, just, just, um, let me know what the questions are and I'll make sure that I fill in any any gaps. So the difference between the courts are the jurisdiction levels. Um, you have a magistrate court here in Georgia, which is like your small claims court. It's your judge duty court. And the jurisdiction there is um, $15,000 and under. State and Superior Court have the same jurisdiction, but um, Superior Court has to hear divorce cases. So they're backed up with divorce cases. And also they have to hear criminal cases. What I started to say was under the Constitution of the United States of America, criminal cases have to uh, be uh, prosecuted within a certain period of time. There is a guarantee of a speedy trial for criminal cases, but not uh, civil cases. So that's why civil cases can linger a whole lot longer than criminal cases can. And so they, they kind of are at the bottom total pole, like personal injury cases. So you got all these divorce cases, and then you have criminal cases that have to be dealt with. So um, you just got to pack your patience when you're dealing with a personal injury case. So that was my bake. And I'm taking my bake off. Just blending, blending, blending. Okay. So you got to pack your patience. So we want to make sure, thank God, that the, uh, the complaint is just a short, plain statement of the facts. You have to file that with the court. Uh, there is a cost to file that. Um, which should be reimbursed to the attorney after the case resolves. The attorney will pay that. And that's that's another thing. There should be no charge for you up front um, while you're pursuing your case. Um, the attorney takes all of the, the costs, but is counting them up and will, is looking to be reimbursed from you if uh, successful, if there is a recovery on your behalf. And just know that no attorney is probably going to take your case unless they understand that they can be reimbursed at the end. So if you get an attorney who's interested in your case, it's, it's probably a good case. If you're not injured, again, you want to handle this on your own because getting an attorney involved is, is additional cost. So, um, and I can talk with you. If you have any questions about handle, how to handle a case on your own, I'm more than happy to talk with you about that too. So I kind of like what's going on here today. I think I'm getting better and better at this every day. Okay. So I want to, did I do my eyes? Yes, I lined my eyes. Yes, um, because I put it up. Okay, let me just do my mascara. Oh, I'm just about done, y'all. I want to do my mascara and my blush and then I'm ready to go. Uh, so, okay, the complaint is filed in court. We've, we've figured out which court, probably the state court of the county where the wreck happened or where the defendant it resides. So we filed the complaint. The next thing that we want to do is um, get the defendant served. You are not involved in all of this. The, your attorney that you hire is involved in all of this. Sometimes defendants evade service and it takes a while. This whole process takes a while. The complaint is filed, service. Then once the defendant is served, he or she has the responsibility to answer the complaint. And I want you to know this. Say you hit a little old sweet mom, she has three kids in the car or a little grandma or somebody like, oh, I don't want to sue them. You're actually not suing them. In the state of Georgia, everyone is entitled to have insurance. This person has insurance. So when we file a lawsuit, we're looking for to be uh, compensated or to get um, recovery from the insurance. Just like you have insurance, they have insurance. And if they don't have the insurance, that's a, a very bad outcome for us. And, but that's part of the investigation. Like when you first sign up with the attorney and we get the police report, that's something we're following up on is whether this person has insurance or not, whether you have insurance. If you don't have insurance, um, that's a problem too. Everyone should have insurance and I encourage everyone to get what's called UM, 
which is uninsured or underinsured, UIM or UM uninsured or underinsured motorist coverage, you want to get that. Because um, just in case somebody hits you and runs off or hits you and they don't have any insurance, you can still not be stuck with all the bills and get some recovery if you have UM or UIM. If you don't, you'll be, you know, up the creek. All right, let me do my blush. All right. So after the defendant answers, we're in what's called discovery. Um, the Georgia Civil Practice Act says that discovery is triggered once the defendant answers. There are six months for the defendant to and the plaintiff to engage in discovery. Discovery is just a process where both parties exchange information back and forth. And so your attorney, this is probably the first time your attorney will really contact you and have you involved in what's going on in the case. They'll ask you some questions. Oh, and by the way, at any point, this case can resolve. At any point, the insurance company can say, oh, we want to settle. But I'm just um, trying to give you the big picture of everything that might possibly happen. So um, you exchange information back and forth. Anytime in this process, you may um, in, um, enter into what's called mediation. Um, the court may order the parties to enter into mediation. Um, and the mediation is just a process the only mandatory thing about mediation at this juncture is that people attend and it's just um just sitting around a table with a neutral party who just talks with everyone about possibly resolving the case so and you will be involved in that your attorney will need you to be present and um attending in good faith so that's mediation uh let me see i don't even know what time it is thank goodness my phone is recording. I don't have my, my watch on. So I was trying to do this in a certain time. My shower took a little bit too long because of that darn love scrub. I just love it. Oh my God. That thing makes me want to not get out of the shower. Okay. And I noticed I had a close up and my lipstick was looking so messy. But anyway. Okay. And now last thing. We're almost done. <sighs> okay, so mediation. All right, let's just say none of that works. Mediation, just talking to the insurance company. And, and the whole time your, your uh, law firm should be, the law firm that you hire should be in contact with the insurance company. Because sometimes, you know, you send a demand and the insurance company's like, oh, we need extra. We need this, that, and the third. And your insurance company, your attorneys are responsible to get that to the insurance company. So, um. The last thing, last, what you really want to get to or what's, what's the ultimate, uh, why this thing is called litigation is because ultimately we get to what's called trial. You go to trial in the county where the case was filed again, either where the defendant resides or where the wreck happened. And that's when you get a jury. Now, I did not brush my edges back this morning, but they don't look bad. I usually do that with some a old toothbrush and some aloe vera, but that's okay. Um, it looks fine. Um, so uh, trial is, I mean, I could do a whole video on that in itself, and I guess that I will. That's another place where you would, your attorney would require that you be involved. You need to be there every day during the trial. You'll sit at the table with the attorney, and basically it's just going through who you are, what happened to you, what uh, compensation do you need to recover. If you need ongoing medical treatment, um, what that is. The whole time that your case is pending, your attorney should be thinking about what is needed to be presented at the trial of the matter, and they should be getting that together. Like if any expert testimony is, excuse me, if any expert testimony is needed, the attorney will be getting all that together. So that's it. In a nutshell, that's what happens with your case. Again, in the meantime, I was, what made me think about this, I was talking to a client yesterday and I explained this to him and I'm more than happy to explain it to my clients. But I think a lot of people are just like anxious, you know, I hope in your lifetime, you're not in that many car wrecks and some people are, are never in one, but um, maybe you're in one. Maybe this is the first one that you've ever had. You just need to, and then some people have a more anxious disposition than others. They may you know, just be very concerned and worry and you know, what's going on with my case. And, and so we make an effort at our law firm to call our clients every now and then. Our paralegals are 
uh, assign cases and they'll call and check in with the clients and make sure that they're feeling better. And then also just surprise them as to what's going on with the case. Some people need more contact than that. And so we, we always just like to let folks know, you know, just pack your patients. It is a long process, unfortunately. And uh, there are cases that, things that happen way before your case and wrecks that happen way before yours happen. And they're still <clears throat> waiting on a trial too. Ooh, <clears throat> that went right up in my throat. Ooh. So we just, um, just wanted everyone to know it's a long process. There's a lot that's going on, but just know if you hired a good attorney, they are on top of it. And anytime you call, they should be happy to let you know exactly where your case is in the process. So I'm just cleaning my brushes now, getting ready to get out of here. Um, wanted to uh, tell you all, okay, so that was the end of the process, the whole litigation process. Let me know if you have any questions. Did I miss anything? I'll watch this back. And if I missed anything that I can tell, I will go ahead and try to fill in the blanks. We got a lot of videos together, a lot of information for me to give you. So topics are good. Topics, topics, topics. Let me know if you are need me to address anything. I'm more than happy to do it. I am here for you. That's why I'm doing this too. So to educate the people. Um, so my book, I love this book. Actually, I'm reading a couple of books right now. Uh, I can share with you what I'm oh, reading books and looking at documentaries. Yesterday was the baby, Beanie Babies documentary. Today was Icarus, a little bit of Icarus, which got on my nerves because there was too much Russian in there. And I look at documentaries and watch TV as I'm cooking and, and washing dishes. And I can't read sub subtitles as I do that. So I had to turn it completely off. I was trying to look at the John DeLorean documentary, but I do not like reenactments in my documentary. Just give me all real footage. So I had to cut that out. They had Alec Baldwin in there playing John DeLorean, which no, thank you. I'll watch a De John DeLorean movie starring Alec Baldwin, but I don't need that interspersed in my documentary. So anyway, the book that I'm reading now is Weird and Unusual Trivia. They, uh, in my former life, I did wills and probate and all that stuff. So I'm always very interested in that type of thing. And so today was about, how could I forget? William Randolph Hearst, who had a book. His will was as long as a book. Okay, which, you know, I said yesterday, everybody have a will. Yeah, everybody needs to get a will, please. But it don't have to be as long as a book. Just a couple pages is good. Six pages at the most. Three, four, six, you know, something like that. <sighs> don't need a book. He took himself quite seriously, I guess. He had a lot of money. So he's like, well, I need, I need to tell you um, chapter and verse. I mean, you got to trust people to some degree that they have enough sense to do what they need to do to carry out your wishes. But anyway, he uh, was trying to leave his his mansion to somebody and they couldn't afford it. I think it was his family members who decided that they couldn't afford it. So um, I just cleaned this brush and I want to use it again. So they decided to, uh, the, the state of California has it actually and are using it as a museum. And I thought that was very interesting. So all plans sometimes can go awry, but it's better that he had a plan rather than none but sometimes being too specific is not as good either so you gotta strike a balance so all right there we go that's our makeup and legal tips for today i hope you all have a wonderful day i certainly am going to try to and i will see you again tomorrow for more makeup and legal tips